It's December, it's Christmas time, and hopefully we can have a few gifts of our own in today's episode. I couldn't avoid the pun, I'm afraid, unfortunately. We start with Osasuna away today. We've got a Sindem game against Braga in the Europa League, where we're already guaranteed to finish second. We can't overtake them, and Traps on Spore below us can't catch us either, and FC Zurich don't stand a chance. Uh, the Simd League game will be Malaga today, because... They're 19th and have five points so far this season. They're not having the best of years. So Osasuna, Real Sociedad and Real Betis will be the three played games today. So we'll start with the first one. They're 10th in the league, Osasuna. They're not too far behind us. We're on 28 points. They are on 23. So there's only a five-point gap. And if you go five points up from us, you actually go top by a point. So they're not that far away from the fight above us and obviously as you can see we've only played 14 and a number above us have played 15 so we're actually technically in the realms of potentially going up into fourth if other results go away from the other sides that have games to play yet Valencia and Sevilla namely so fingers crossed we can start off well and just go from there we've actually been in decent form dare I say it was a bit of squeaky bum time yesterday with some very narrow margins of in fact every victory was by a single goal and even the defeats was by a single goal as well it's rare for us to get a 1-0 as well, let alone two in three games. Uh, prior to that, we've been in relatively good form as well. So we're having a really solid season here at Mallorca in Season 4. And the aim of qualifying for the Champions League is very much still alive. In fact, we're not that far away from challenging for the title. But let's not get carried away. Let's not get carried away. We'll start with Osasuna away from home and take it one game at a time. You can see their starting lineup on the left-hand side there. They're playing a 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one. Actually, one thing I don't think I've shown you yet is a new youngster that we found. I can't recall. I may have shown you this guy already. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Felix Paredes, a Uruguayan, 85-94 to 94 potential. He came in at 62 rated. Has a four-star weak foot. We're training him as a playmaker. The Vernon plan shouldn't have too much longer to run on. No, just the five weeks. So by the time we get into January, he should uh, be developing quite nicely. He's already got exceptional dribbling skills for such a young man. Ball control of 83, agility of 83, balance 80. So his composure and reaction is really the lowest stats. And at the minute, we're training just his composure. We're trying to train him as a box-to-box -to, -box to mainly improve those passing stats. Then we can... Sorry, mainly as a playmaker, so we can improve those passing stats. And I'm contemplating switching to box to box to improve his pace, a little bit of shooting, and then further improve those dribbling stats if we can. Although, yeah, ball in midfielder could perhaps help those reactions, but obviously his defensive stats aren't, they're not the necessity, they're not even needed for the position that he'll be playing in uh, if he makes it to the first team squad. So he's promising, actually. 85 to 94 potential, 80 to 94 still for Mikize. And Avila, or Mikizi, and Avila still meh. But Paredes looks pretty decent already, you know, for 62 rated. We, of course, have a handful of our own youngsters out on loan. Currently, we'll have a look at those as we head into the month of January tomorrow, as we'll look to recall some of them. But for now, let's concentrate on Osasuna and getting three points away from home. You can see their starting lineup there. I believe it's Jacob Murphy on the right-hand side, Davide Santon and Ben Mee on that right-hand side of their defensive line as well. And obviously, middle stat, the German... At left back, let's go and get it done. Bay, across the rubber tone. They're playing in a pretty familiar strip. Red and white top with dark shorts. Obviously, they're navy blue to our black, but oh, Kufre is in behind here. And Insua, I oh, thought about running. In the end, decided not to. Hernandez did get to it there, but he's headed it wide. He's done well to get to it in the first place, so I'm not necessarily going to be too critical of him missing the target there. But... Could have been an early 1-0 lead for us. Sadly, it wasn't to be. How, mate? Out wide to Jacob Murphy. You can see the title fight in the little graphic above. And we're only two points behind that title fight at the moment with this game in hand on at least two of the th four at the top, if not three of the four at the top. So don't count us out from challenging at the, at the top for the title come the very end of the season. But we're concentrating on just getting into the top four, let alone battling with them at the moment. And once we get there, hopefully we can put ourselves in a really strong position to stay there for the majority of the rest of the... Well, for the full rest of the year, let alone the majority of the rest of the year. Once we're up there, I don't want to relinquish it. We're certainly not relinquish it, relinquishing any chances at the back for Osasuna here. And Insua is going to wait for the runners around you. In fact, I will look for Kubo out there. And I'll perhaps cut this back to Sheriff Bay on the edge of the box. That's 
where the ball was intended to go. Robertone's done well once, but yikes, will probably pick himself up a yellow card for that. And unfortunately, no secondary effort for us. Kuba with the throw. Robertone, the obvious recipient. Kuto is there in the middle. Try and go one way, then the other. He sent the defender, and oh, Gineppo's done brilliantly. Oh, but he can't finish it. Musa, please. Oh, you'd have thought that'd have been a, the simplest of tap ins for Musa Gineppo, especially with the form he's been in, but somehow he's hit that straight at the goalkeeper, and it's a simple save. We won't get a much more clear cut chance between now and the end of the game, if you feel. We certainly will get other chances, but whether there'll be as obvious a chance as that, I'm not sure. Kuto trying to stretch Ben Mee here. And he's turning so brilliantly and finished wonderfully well. That is what we need from Kucho on a more regular basis. But he is still scoring quite a few goals for us. We have one of the best defences in the league. And we have ourselves a 1-0 lead. Okay, Ardo back to Mittelstadt. Into Moncola. I'm hoping, hoping that we can get a second goal in this second half. Because I... As good as we were yesterday at keeping clean sheets in half our games. I don't feel that confident today. It's a new a new day, a new recording session. And I haven't been that solid defensively in the opening 55 minutes of this first game that I've played. So I'm not overly confident at the moment until I actually put in a couple of good performances and claim a couple of clean sheets or at least start to defend half decently. I am always going to be wary of conceding a goal. And they will work that inside in the end. Lucas Toro has options here. One of which outside here is Gallardo. They're just ever so reluctant to actually cross the football. It's so frustrating. We have brought it up to the gameplay team. So hopefully something is done about it. But I don't know. See that They have finally crossed there. But they had such better opportunities throughout the course of that move. That he just didn't bother trying to whip it in towards the back post or something. Kubo is here. He's got the, the pace on Robertone. So we'll cut that back to him, actually. Ah, it's well intercepted. Ha! I'm not necessarily at my best, but certainly Osasuna haven't been at theirs. Still 1-0. A bit of a stalemate second half, this one. No obvious chances for either side that have really said... where you would really have said, team has to score. Koko Vegas makes the save. Dinepo is probably going to keep that in as well. And he's done. Ah! Yeah, he has done. Oh. I thought for a minute he was going to take a touch and walk it straight out for a corner to Osasuna. 12 minutes to go. I haven't made a change. I don't think they have either, actually. Both sides happy enough to just stick with the 11 that they had on the field at the beginning of the game and try and get the job done. That scenario there where one side has a half chance and then the other tries to counter and fails is kind of what's happened all game long. Here's Hamey. Nice tackle by Evan and Dicker and we'll... Deny them the chance of that equaliser. And at the minute, we look like we're good for another 1-0 victory. Which is... Well, they used to be ve very rare indeed. But to get three in the past two episodes would be pretty much unheard of. I'll look for the man in the middle here. Or, you know, overhit the pass and try and find Takafusa Kubo instead. Robert Tony was there waiting for it. Here's Lucas Toro again. He's got Mittelstadt and Gallardo to aim for. If they equalise now, I really will be annoyed at myself for giving away possession the way that we just did. Here's... A Timmy Avia, but Dominguez does well. And there's Kubo down the line. Robertone is actually ahead of his man, so we could play it in front of him here. We could finish the game with a second goal. Where are you running, Kucho? Literally straight at me for no apparent reason. Ah, offensive movement. Not necessarily his strong point on that occasion. Why would you run straight at the man and bring the defenders across to me? Come on, pal. Thank you, referee. A 1-0 win. We'll take it against Osasuna. Not the best of performances, but... Still able to get the win and the three points. And that's the most important thing. You see, they only had one shot. We had six, but not many of them were of too high a level of quality. But getting the win is the most important thing. Right, Braga next. That'll be a sim. And then I think actually the next game after that is the Malaga one, which is the sim as well. Indeed it is. So I'll actually rotate for this European game so that the full strength side are able to play in the uh, the game against Malaga, because that obviously is the more important fixture right now. So we will rotate quite a bit here. Well, why not give players like Zaki Ali a chance in the starting lineup? Suleiman can have a crack as well. Uh, other than that, oh yeah, well, Senho can go and go. Was, to be fair, I was planning on using a Senho as my cup goalkeeper, and I've uh, used him like once. Carlos Mane for Kubo, and that's the final change. And then we'll be good to go. We are good to go. Right, quick sim. Giza win. 
Thanks. Shatine with the 89th minute winner for Braga, rather than us getting three points, but it doesn't matter. We finish second in the group and progress to the knockout stages of the Europa League. Some matches have been rescheduled in February as £4.8 million has been added to the club's coffers for next season. We have Porto in the first knockout round of the Europa League. That's a winnable tie for sure. We have Atleti at home in the... Uh, well, actually, that's the Super Cup. That's not even the, the Copa del Rey. That's the Super Cup. Why is the Super Cup being held in January? What? View fixture. What is this? The su So the Copa del Rey... What's the Super Copper that has semi-finals in it? I don't, I don't know as I'm aware of that competition in Spain. I thought there was just like a... I thought the... I thought the Super Cup was at the beginning of the season. Where, like the Community Shield. What is this? You guys will have to explain it to me because I think that's changed, doesn't it? The, super, the Spanish Super Cup used to be at the beginning of the season. I don't know. We've got Atleti in the Super Copper. All right, fine. Uh, in the, the next month. But for now, we're going to concentrate on the league. We're actually up to, we're up to third, I've just noticed. Up to third in the league. So ahead of this game against Malaga, we're actually looking very solid right now. And very much in with a chance of challenging for that title. Avila has completed his position change. Andre Avila has now moved to a centre mid, or will be moving to a centre mid. He's currently a 63. He stays a 63. Great. Well, can we train his dribbling and his uh, passing? There we go. Box to box. He's got a one-star weak foot, though. Um, let's do this first, because then it can take four weeks, and then we'll do his weak foot after that. Well, that's one position change that hasn't really worked. Well, sim the game against Mallorca, they are 19th and on five points. If we don't win this, then I really do question whether we're any good. A 3-1 win. I kind of tempted fate a little bit there, didn't I? Robertone with a brace and Sheriff Bay with a goal. A rare goal for him. We dominated that game. They only had one shot there, Malaga, and they scored it because, of course, they did. So we have Real Sociedad and Real Betis left remaining in this episode. Look at the title fight. And Barcelona have drawn. Uh, we can go top if we beat Real Sociedad. We've Betis to play as well today. Sociedad are 12th. Betis is 16th. Malaga still on six points. Gerona only on three. Yuck. So we were certainly going to get the win against Malaga. But, oh, are we? Are we title contenders? Maybe. Maybe? That's their starting lineup on the right-hand side. Whether we can keep it going all season, I don't know. But it's been a brilliant first half of the year. You'll have to let me know in the comment section if you think we can see it through. For now, though, let's see if we can go top. Gineppo. Kufre's on the run. It's a good run, too. Can Insua get himself into the box to maybe get on the end of this cross? Or can Kubo get there? Neither of them do. Bay should win this header. The midfielder there for them has got the run on him. Pellegrini does well. Anderson Taliska finds Mauro Jr. who gets it back to Oyarzabal. Dangerous side for Sociedad. I'm surprised to see them where they are in the league. They were challenging towards the European spots last season, weren't they? Here's Adnan Yanazai. They're in here, but perfectly timed tackle by Ndika as Yanazai overruns it. That's a sort of, that's the sort of thing that I normally do in that situation. It's odd to see the AI actually make a, a touch error like that, a control error. Oyarzabal could get this inside to a teammate. Really good, Oyaz, but they've got such a good side. Mario Rui in their starting lineup too. Max Ons Kakare in the midfield. Lorenzo Pellegrini. How are they down in like, lower mid table? It's awful, really, from Sociedad. They're having a terrible year. I wonder whether the manager's job would be at risk if it were real life or football manager. In FIFA, there is no managerial market, so there's no way to tell. They've got Robin Koch to centre back as well. Obviously, the former Leeds centre back. Yanazai is obviously really good as well. Kim Min Jae steals that away, but the pass is poor. And the German will come across and intercept again for Sociedad. Ismaili at right back for them is a decent player as well. Anderson Taliska up top is a very capable striker. Oh, God. They have a very good side, and it's clearly causing us some problems here because I'm getting a little bit rashed and rushed in my... Uh, in my plane. 
Pellegrini with the call. If they take the lead, it's because I've been floundering and been flustered at the back. Kim Min Jae clears the header away and will try again to clear the lines. 23rd minute, Yanazai whips. It's there for the man at the near post, but it will fall to Yanazai again. Waiting for the cutback, which hasn't come yet. Oh, through the defender's legs, but thankfully straight to the keeper. Kubo into Kucho. And so look at the run Kufre is making as the obvious recipient will whip it early. Ah, but I've, I've whipped it so early that the striker's not going to get there. Insu was there, though. Ah, so that was meant for. Kucho. Oh. That one misplaced pass might cost me here. Or it could set the entire move alight. Kucho with a shot that's very well saved by the goalkeeper. That's our best chance of the game so far. Arguably should have buried that, but forced the keeper into a very good save is the at least minimum you would expect in that position. And he's done that there. Yanazai, the ball back to Ismaili. I'm a bit outnumbered here with Kufre. Oh, he's done well, though. It's to be a corner for Sociedad. They've been the better team here. We are on the back foot. And my squeaky bum time performances in the past few games where we've not really been good enough, but have been able to sneak results, is really being put to the test here at the moment. Because Sociedad are performing against us, which is the first time... An AI side has properly done that since the Barcelona game, I feel. Kubo on the counter. I wasn't meant for Robertoni, but it found him anyway. He's got the space to try and find Kubo, but not the quality on the pass to get it to him. Five minutes till half time. It's still nil-nil here, but with one key pass or one snapshot, we could take the lead. Is this the snapshot? No, it's not. Nice ball over the top, but we sh should deal with that, I thought. Nicola Dominguez. Oh, Kim Min Jae gets in. It's a strong challenge, but a fair one. Definitely got ball before man, so the referee made the right decision in not giving a foul there. Atleti take a 2-0 lead against Villarreal as their hunt for the league title continues, and they're in good form as well. It's a good run by Kucho, and I'll look for him here. He's going to have to hit it early. Does so, and misses the target. Under pressure, yes, but should finish. What's his actual finishing stat with a boost he's getting in the is He's grown up to uh, 82 now. His finishing is, in-game, 91 with that plus 7 boost. That didn't look like a 91-rated finish to me. Nice tackle by Bate. Robertone. A nil-nil isn't the worst result against a team this good, but with the season they're having... And with the ambitions we seemingly are having this year, it, it's the sort of game that we should win. And if we want to be taken seriously in the top four or even for the title, we have to win. You've got to win all your home games. Anderson Taliska with a free kick here. Oh! The keeper must have thought it was going wide. It cannons back off the post and straight to Yanazai. The way the keeper just stood there and looked at it, I thought, oh, it's going wide. So I wasn't that worried. And then the header's almost straight at him as well and wasn't hit with that much power. That's a really frustrating goal to concede. And I've gone from drawing and hoping to win to now not being sure whether we'll even muster a draw. How big a miss is that against well, Fakuto now? And the other chances we've had in this game will lift this for Kubo, who will get to it first. He says, as Mario Rui gets the uh, connection to it. Look for Gineppo. Find Gineppo. Insua is there. Spin. Get it to Kufre. And Gineppo's there again. And there's Sheriff Bay looking for Kucha. At his feet. And the shot blocked. Chance to get there for Robertone. But I failed the man in trying to do so. That will be a throw for us. No, he's probably going to keep that in, isn't he? He is. Adnan Yanazai does spectacularly well. Well, we are 1-0 down. Still looking to press to get ourselves a goal. But on previous experience in this game, a goal ain't coming. Maybe one is for them. Good block by the goalkeeper. Oh, a little more likely to concede at the minute than we do score a goal to equalise. Really need to fix up because this is not good enough. Talisco. Oh, as well is on the run. He looked for him there but couldn't get it to him. I've got three changes waiting to be made but... This is a promising counter-attacking opportunity. It will look for Kucho. 
Got it back to Gineppo and then lift it, looking for Cucho again. He should have the pace to get to that. And he's done really well. And now looks to lift over the keeper. He's in the bar. Cucho, please bury this. Thank you, Lord. An equaliser has arrived. And actually, let me quickly pause. Because he's done that, he can stay on the field. Gineppo is moving to the right. Musa is coming on for Kubo. And then coming on the left. Robertone is being moved to Kamazin. Sua comes off and Pippa comes on. And Dominguez is going into midfield. And I was making the Lam Kelze for Hernandez change as well. But... He's earned his place on the field for now, Cucho. And if he can find us a winner as well, I'll be thrilled. Very unlucky not to get the goal with the lofted effort. Just doing the right thing at the right time. But I guess fortunate that it fell back to him. Great technique to smack it home. His eighth goal of the La Liga season. <sighs> we have an equaliser at goddamn last. Or just a goal in general in this game at goddamn last. Just so happens to be an equaliser and not one to take us in front. Ten minutes to find one more. Taliska over the top. Get there, Kufre. Good header. Ugh. Well, he won the header well. He didn't aim it very well. Yikes. Yanai to Ismaili. I'm going to draw Kufre out of position and try and steal it off him to go on a counter, but I haven't been able to do so. Taliska is available as an option in the middle. Maro Jr. to Kakare. Taliska is left footed, I think, so trying to keep him off it. It's a good challenge by Dominguez. Oh, challenge. Well up, Kufre. Counter. Go. Go. Run. Run, Kucho. Run. I'll try and find you if I can. Oh, I can't. Balls. Two minutes to go. Just couldn't shake off the attention of the defender there. And Lucas Robertone couldn't release the ball. It's either about... Oh, there's space for Yanazai, their goal scorer. It would be a winner now if either side score. Taking the time here, so we're not going to get the chance to go up the other end. If they score now, it's game over with the last kick of the game. But they are going to have to get it into the middle. They are about... No. Kakare Mara Junior. Coco Vegas with a brilliant save. They will, annoyingly, get the chance to take the corner. That should be game over. Hernandez had six shots in this game, but could only score one of them. Oh, get away! Oh, after the free kick, I wasn't sure when the keeper looked at it there that it was going to go wide or hit the woodwork or go in. We get a point at home against Real Sociedad. Given the way the game played out, I think I'm happy with that, especially after going 1-0 down. But, oh, the chance to go top has been wasted. Atleti will go top. No, they won't. Atleti will go... How are we down in sixth again all of a sudden? I could have... Could have gone top. We've gone sixth. Still only two points off top. Right. Valencia lead the way now. Bring on Betis. This time I will get three points. Bartra and Hermoso at the back. They're going to create quite the defensive partnership. And odds on Eduard up top. Camarasso has played very well against us in previous games. And, well, Eduard is a player I would have loved to bring to the club. But I'm pleased with the signing of Kucho so far. He's not been as prolific as Brenner was in the spells where Brenner was prolific. But he's definitely a very good player. And we'll loft this looking for Insua. And it's a dream start away from home against Betis. He's not been scoring that regularly, Federico Insua, recently. But he's got a great goal there. Not the most difficult of finishes. It's a good run, though, to find that space. And you see that their number five be like, Mark, Mark Bartra was like, which way do I go? Do I go with Hernandez? Do I go with Insua? He, in the end, was in between the two. And Insua was like, mm, time for much. I'll just uh, volley that on the half volley first time into the back of the net. Bing! Thank you! 1-0. Ball down the line, and we could threaten to make it too. Robertone in sewer. Oh, I tried to go one way and then dart the other and didn't get away with it. But we have earned a free kick in a good position. In fact, it's a very good position. Come on then, Mr. Robertone. What have you got here for me? <gasps> Something decent, but not unfortunately good enough to get it past Bodart. We scored against a goalkeeper playing in yellow against Villarreal and we have got the ball past another goalkeeper in yellow here against Betis but we can't get it past him more than once Moreno over the top it's a bit loose it's a bit loose and Ndicka will get it to it get to it Bay is here and none of the middle two really making a run I can use and by which point I tried to divert my attention to Gineppo he wasn't really in a position I could use either they've had a lot of the ball Betis but it is the way in Spain the AI, the oppositions do tend to have a lot of the ball, but we are able to uh, be very clinical. 
with our chances, or at least very efficient with our minimum possession. Minimal possession. Kufre with another good delivery. This time Bartra does get to it. Kufre knocks that down. It won't find Bay. It will find Gineppo. I was trying to squeeze his shot off quickly, but didn't have the space to do so. Seven minutes still half time. They've got us on the back foot now, but they've gone backwards here. And our 1-0 lead for the time being is okay for now. I feel more confident of holding on to a 1-0 lead here than I did in the last game, that's for sure. And I obviously didn't even get a 1-0 lead in the game against Sociedad. I feel a lot more confident defensively in this fixture. And a lot more stable. I get lucky. I get fortunate. I get very lucky. Oh! Well, I didn't do anything with the controller there, so I feel like I can't really take credit for that. Really, really lucky there. And Insua has just run into the ball. He's not. He's just hit him. I tried to shoot, but he didn't do anything. There was no animation there. He just, he just hit him. And the keeper's gone, ah, um, oh. <laughs> and the keeper was waiting to, for Insua to wind up for a shot, to try and get an idea of which way to go to potentially save a point-blank range shot. And Insua's just gone... It's fooled the keeper really well indeed, but... You get no-look shots. That was a no-shot shot. Yeah, don't really know what's going on there, other than we have a 2-0 lead now, and that's three points, surely. Good header by Kufrey. Bay needed to get that out of his feet a bit quicker than that, really. It's kind of slowed the move up, but Kucho. Oh, it's a nice sharp turn. And I need one again. In Suar, power off! Wide of the target. It needed the shot power to ensure it went past the keeper from that distance. But he just pulled it past the post. So very nearly nestling in that bottom corner. We're looking good already, but that would have absolutely assured things. Edgar off and Sergio Canales on for them. So definitely an offensive change as they look to get themselves back in this tie. They could really do with some points to get themselves away from the relegation zone. Really, Betis. Side that really should be top half. Really should be top half. But they're floundering, as they did last year as well. Uh, they've not turned the corner yet, Real Betis. We're looking to turn the corner from Europa League challengers to Champions League or title challengers. And this win certainly get us back towards those top four and or top one spot. And we should be able to see this out for a 2-0 victory unless they score here, which they won't because Nicolas Dominguez has put a firm end to their attack. And actually, we could have... No, we won't, because he's over hit the pass. Never mind. Back to Sergi Canales. Sheriff Bay does well. He's been quite invisible, Sheriff Bay, for the majority of this season, really. This is where Gineppo's pace comes in handy. And this is the sort of scenario where I... Or why I said I kind of didn't want absolutely rapid 95-plus pace or 90-plus pace players in the side. Because that's just too easy, isn't it? To just literally run away and sprint off. Because you're able to do it so regularly with the AI not really being that good defensively in dealing with that sort of style of play. Ah, trying to squeeze it around the corner. That's why I haven't signed players that are absolutely massively rapid. Obviously, we... Oh, that was a foul. We have players... Oh, that probably will be as well. We have players that have grown to get massively fast, like Federico and Sua. And Gineppo was improved in his pace stats since he's been with us. See, Plano could cross there and he just doesn't. Some fundamental things that are really still very frustrating about the gameplay engine on FIFA that hopefully can be addressed in the coming years. I'm not sure whether... Oh, he's probably offside there. I'm not sure whether a change in the engine is needed, i.e. we need to move away from Frostbite. I'm not sure if, that, if it's genuinely that deep of an issue with the gameplay, but I'd like to think not. Obviously, it's, it's been a bit of a problem since well, since we started using Frostbite and moved to that from the Ignite engine. The AI just really don't like to cross at all, ever. And if they do, it's in a scenario where you know they've kind of worked themselves into the corner and it's kind of a last gasp attempt to put something into the middle rather than, I've got loads of space and men in the middle. I know, I'll cross the ball. They just... Don't do it. They stop, they turn, they pass backwards, and they pass inside, and they come back out, and they run around the corner flag. <sighs> One of the more frustrating things about trying to create entertaining content is where you kind of butt your head against shitty gameplay again and again and again. And 
I try and make it as entertaining as I can, but I'm sure you can understand the frustrations. There's only so many times you can kind of say the same things about the same thing happening that's frustrating over like four years worth of creating content. So we'll wait and see what happens in January. I've got some names on my shortlist that I'll show you tomorrow. Uh, obviously, we've got Atleti in the Super Cup. I mean, maybe we go to try and win that, but it's Atletico, Real, Barcelona and ourselves. So... Not sure what's going to happen there. I, I imagine it's first and second in the league against the two finalists from the Copa del Rey, but I genuinely have no idea what the history of that Super Cup competition is. I, I'll Google it between uh, now and recording the next episode, but we'll be into January next time around, and we've three home games and one away, so we'll just wait and see what happens. But for now, that victory against Real Betis has moved us, hopefully, back into the top four. It's moved us back into the top two, and we are a single point off top spot. Of course, it's done on head-to-head -head in Spain before goal difference, hence why we are above Valencia and Atletico Madrid rather than below them because their goal difference is better. However, if Barcelona get themselves up to the same amount of points as us, they'll go above all of us, or at least above me, because of their... Uh, because of their victory over us i'm not sure how it works when there's multiple sides on the same amount because obviously barcelona have beaten us so they'd go above me on head to head but i don't if they've lost to valencia and atleti they then can't go above atleti or valencia but have to go above me but i'm above valencia and atleti so they can't go above me but below valencia and atleti because i can't go below valencia and atleti so then maybe it does go to goal difference i I don't know. I've never encountered that scenario. Like, presumably, Valencia have beaten Atletico Madrid. Or, because Valencia have lost to us and Atleti have lost to us, or drawn with us, we've got a positive result against them. Then Valencia might have beaten Atleti, which is why they're above there, but not... I genuinely have no idea how it works. It's it's more complex than my brain can comprehend at this particular moment in time. Perhaps one of you can explain it properly for me in the comment section down below. I'll look into that super copper though, at least for the next episode. But for now, that's going to be all for this Sunday afternoon. I'm live again later on this afternoon from about four o'clock with some more football manager with Cambridge United. We'll be either ending the league season or starting the new season. So certainly come across and join me. But for now... That's all for this afternoon. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.